When you buy Kroger brand products, you feel like you're winning. That's because they offer proven quality at lower than low prices. In fact, we guarantee that you and your family will love how Kroger brand products taste. Or you get your money back. So next time you're shopping for the family, look for delicious Kroger brand products. Because they'll make you all feel like you're winning. Shop now, in-store, or online. Bakers, fresh for everyone. Why? Why? If you Why? have T-Mobile 5G home internet, you might be hearing this Why? a lot. Why? Every time your internet slows down during the busiest hours. Why? Why? Because your network gives priority to cell phone users. Why? Why? Good question. Why not switch to Cox Internet with two times faster download speeds than T-Mobile 5G home internet during peak hours? Okay. Stop the whys and visit cox.com slash 5G home for details. T-Mobile prioritizes certain T-Mobile phone users over home internet users during times of congestion. And now we're joined by one of the newest members of the New York football giants, offensive lineman, John Runyon. John, welcome to New York, man. Appreciate it for you having me. Excited to be here. All right. So why'd you choose New York? Um, I just kind of felt like throughout the whole process, the Giants were a team that, you know, really, really wanted me. And um, I really believe in what they're building here. And I'm just really excited to be part of it. Um, kind of grew up in South Jersey and, you know, sticking around in New Jersey. And it was just kind of just like an easy, you know, the easy uh, choice for me. How important was it for you to be able to, quote unquote, stay home? Um, I don't necessarily know how important it was, but I mean, it definitely was a big factor. And uh, coming here to one of the most historic franchises in the NFL, and that's a hard opportunity to pass up and being so close to friends and family and be a part of this uh, organization, it's just an opportunity I can't pass up. You mentioned that you believe in what they're building here. Yeah. What is it that appealed to you and, and why do you believe in the vision? Just, you know, Coach Dayball and, uh, you know, what he preaches, just attitude, toughness, and just being dependable. And I feel like that's the kind of player that I try to be uh, each and every day. I always try to be the same person, uh, go there, be a leader for others, whether that's vocally or by example, and, you know, pull people together and carry them along with me and uh, just try to make the best out of whatever situation that we're in. Giants have a new offensive line coach, Carmen Brasillo. Have you had a chance to talk to him at all? Uh, just briefly. Uh, we had a good conversation, and uh, we go back a little bit. Had some pre-draft meetings with him, so it's, it's nice to get in here, reconnect with him, and you know, see how everything's going with him. Now, you're a multiple position guy, right guard, left guard. Have they talked to you about where they want to plug you in here, or is that still something that you're going to figure out down the road? Uh, I think it's something we'll figure out down the road. Uh, not too sure you know, where they're looking at me, and it's going to be one of the guard positions, and I've played – a lot of games at both guard positions. So, you know, I'll be comfortable everywhere. It, it doesn't matter. I just I just like being on the field and going out there and uh, playing football. Now, more recently, you've been a right guard. Yeah. So with switching back to left, you just said no difference to you, a full comfort on both sides? <clears throat> I played on the left side most of my career in uh, college and pro. And last two seasons, I switched over to right. And I think I do kind of like left left guard, but I've gotten so comfortable on the right side. It, does, it doesn't really matter where I'm at. And you mentioned Michigan is where you went to school, left yeah. tackle there, correct? Yeah. Yeah. And I think I see some of that, those tackle traits and how you pass protect at guard. How much did playing tackle in college, you think, prepare you for the pass protection aspects of playing guard in the National Definitely. Football League? Uh, there's, there's a lot to that. Um, the game has changed so much um, in over the years. So being able to pass protect is vital for you know your success and survival in this league. So... Uh, having that background, playing left tackle at Michigan, I'm kind of able to bring some of those traits and you know that I was used to playing tackle in the inside and guard because it's a little bit different on the outside versus the inside, but you know same relative concept. Keep the guy in front of you and don't let him get to the quarterback. So um, it is nice having that you know that feeling out on the edge. But when you're inside guard, you're kind of in a little phone booth and you know dancing with a 330-pound guy. And uh, I do carry some of that over. Uh, some of my sets do kind of look like a tackle set, but that's just depending on down and distance stuff. But I, I was really appreciated I was able to play outside in college and come here. It kind of felt like it was a seamless transition. Yeah, defenses will try to spread you guys out now. They'll put the guys wide oh, and they'll yeah. try to isolate you and widen that phone booth, right? Yeah. I mean, I was looking back at a lot, a lot of your tape this year. You were one on one with Chris Jones when you guys played the Chiefs. One on one with Aaron Donald, right? When you when you played the Rams. So, yeah. you mentioned three hundred thirty pound guys. Now there are two hundred eighty five and ninety pound guys yeah. at defensive tackle that 
kind of move like defensive ends, right? Yeah, you got the you got the little guys that can run four, five, four, six, four sevens, and you got the big guys that right. can still be moving uh, about a five forty and uh, like to line up defensive linemen sometimes outside of the tackle and you know bring a lot of twists and stuff, especially with the nose and the tackle in the end. And there's so so much variance going on in this game, and you got to be ready for a new look every down and. Pass protection is a huge part of this game, and I feel like that's one of my strengths. You mentioned the twists and the stunts. Obviously, communication and the line playing as one group is really what makes it vital to protect well against those type of plays. Watching you, it seems like your head's always on a swivel. Mm -hmm. How much is a part of being an offensive lineman being aware to know where the guys are coming on from, like tape study during the week in formation so that you're ready for some of those games? Definitely. That's a huge part of it. Just kind of understanding. There's, there's so many factors that going into it. Kind of understanding the down and distance, um, recognizing like what point of the game we're in, yeah. you know, understanding what personnel's out in the field. And this is all stuff that happens even before you break the huddle. And uh, walking up to line of scrimmage, you can kind of see where guys are starting to move around. And uh, something will remind you, like, oh, I remember watching this look on tape. Like, this is something that they like out of here. And able to give your guys kind of those reminders pre-snap. So whatever happens, however it works out, you're able to react to it. And uh, that's why I feel like film study is so important. It kind of gives you that sense of calm where you're, you're like, I've seen this before. I, I kind of understand what they're trying to do here. And that just gives you the ability and the awareness to know what's going on and not feel like you're caught off guard no matter what certain kind of look they're trying to throw at you. From a technique perspective, from an offensive line standpoint, what do you think you're best at? Uh, I, I try to have the same, uh, you know, stance. I, I feel like a lot of offensive line play, you know, do some people try like to change based on if they're pass blocking or the run blocking. I mean, not talking about 2.3 or a three point stance, but always defense alignment like to pick up on, you know, how much weight you have on the hand, which way you lean, which way are you leaning? Um, that's something I try to keep consistent. You know, there's certain plays and certain down and distance. I mean, it's the same thing goes for the D line as well. I always try to be consistent in my stance and, you know, try to be explosive as, as explosive as I can as well. We talked about your offensive line coach. How about some of the guys you'll be playing with? You have Andrew Thomas at left tackle. You could be playing next to him if you're at left guard. Then you have a couple young guys, right? You have John Michael Schmitz, who's heading into his second year at center. Evan Neal heading into his third year at right tackle. Jermaine Illuminor is another new player that's coming over. Mm -hmm. Talk about some of the teammates that you're going to be sharing the field with. Yeah, I'm excited. All great, great players. And I've kind of been watching, you know, just around the league and, you know, weekly film study, watch the Giants every now and then. And um, definitely got a lot of talent. And uh, I'm excited to be part of that and start building this group and, you know, really bond and build this thing together from the bottom up. And I feel like from an offensive perspective, a lot of success starts with the offensive line, whether that's giving the quarterback time to throw back there, make him feel comfortable where he can get to, you know, that second or third read and opening up holes in the run game. And that's really important. And that, that's what's going to start with up front, that offensive line play. So. Uh, we're going to work hard this off season in the training camp and, you know, we'll be ready by the time that, uh, the week one comes. You have a couple connections, Jalen Mayfield, who's on a future reserve contract. He played with you in Michigan, right? Yeah. And Ben Bredesen, who's free agent right now, but he's been here for a few years. Yeah. Um, you play with him in Michigan as well. What yeah. are some of the things that you talked to those guys about, or did you, and what did they tell you about the Giants? Um, just a little bit stuff. Uh, not too much. I talked talk to Ben a little bit and, uh, I actually haven't talked to Jalen yet since, um, I got to New York, but I did talk to him a couple of weeks ago, just kind of just out of nowhere. And it was kind of funny, but uh, Ben kind of letting me know about what to expect in New York, you know, like where, you know, where to live and how everything's going, like what's going on with travel and everything. And uh, he's, he's been letting me know. And I've seen Ben handle it really well. And me and Ben are really close. We, we play next to each yeah. other. I was left tackle. He's left guard. So um, me and Ben are really similar, I feel like as well. So, um, I trust Ben, and you know he prepared me for this, and I'm, I'm excited to get after it up here in New York. I'm sure one of the guys that helped you prepare for this is your dad, who obviously was an offensive tackle in the NFL for a long time, part of the Giants-Eagles rivalry. We'll talk about that too. Yeah. Uh, how does he help guide you and get you to this moment where you were successful enough as a rookie on your rookie contract to be a sought-after free agent and landing here with the Giants? Yeah, uh, my whole football career, my dad's always kind of just been – Hands off, watching from afar, but the moment I've needed him, he's always been there for me, whether that's with advice or help with a technique or something like that. He's, he's always been that kind of person for me, and uh, it's really awesome. And uh, he, had a, he had a really long, successful career in the NFL, and um, 
he's just helped me so much along the way and it, it means a lot having him in my corner and the rest of my family as well uh they really made me who i am today and i'm thankful for that because without them i really wouldn't i don't know if i'd be here do you remember the eagles giants strahan runyon matchups or were you too young no i, I remember uh when my dad got to philly in 2000 and his last year there was 2008 so by his, about his last year, I was about 11 years old. So I, I got some really good memories of, you know, it being a school night, I'm watching Sunday night football, Monday night football, and I'd be staying up late. Uh, I had a we had a little TV uh, that I was able to watch it on, and uh, it was always, it was always fun watching those games. And I'd be sitting there just alone by myself watching it up past my bedtime. And those, those are some awesome uh, memories I have of watching my dad go against uh, the New York Giants. A little weird being on the other side of it now, putting on blue? Um, I don't think so. Um, you know, ever since uh, I've got to the league, uh, a lot of my allegiances have gone away, obviously, you know, for obvious reasons. And excited to be here in New York. Um, we're just really pumped about it. And uh, I can't wait. I can't wait to start. Fun to be in the NFC East, though, right? Like the battered blue. I mean, it's, that Definitely. feels like that kind of fits your personality a little bit, right? Definitely. I grew up watching NFC East football uh, pretty much only uh, when I was a little kid and even in high school. So excited to be here and uh, traveling down to Philly once a year. I got, you know, kind of from that area. I got a lot of friends and family out there. So I'm excited to they'll be able to see me there and come up whenever they want. I usually end these interviews by asking, oh, is there one thing, cool thing in New York that you've always wanted to do? But you live here, so I'm not going to ask you that. <laughs> but is it kind of cool to kind of kind of migrate north a little bit up up to New York City where you're around the Big Apple a, a little bit tighter? Definitely. It's cool. Um, just kind of coincidentally, we were, uh, me and my fiance, Tori, we were here last, last week uh, going around looking at some stuff and really had no, I mean, we had a sort of a feeling that there was a chance that we might be here. But uh, it's really cool. And I'm excited to go around. We went to a show. We went to dinner. Uh, my fiance Tori is a big fan of the Today Show. And uh, she, we're definitely going to take a few more trips back there and get her, get her over there. So we're really excited for that. That's awesome. Congratulations. Welcome to New York, John. I can't wait to see you on the field. Yeah, thank you very much. Thanks John Runyon, me. one of the newest members of the New York Football Giants. Why? Why? If you Why? have T-Mobile 5G home internet, you might be hearing this Why? a lot. Why? Every time your internet slows down during the busiest hours. Why? Why? Because your network gives priority to cell phone users. Why? Why? Good question. Why not switch to Cox Internet with two times faster download speeds than T-Mobile 5G home internet during peak hours? Okay. Stop the whys and visit cox.com slash 5G home for details. T-Mobile prioritizes certain T-Mobile phone users over home internet users during times of congestion. The South Dakota Stories, Volume 5. South Dakota seemed like the perfect place to unplug. But I ended up connecting to the world around me. A world where each sunset was painted. Where I felt adventures pulse with every step. And where cold water trickling, pine swaying, and grunting bison became my favorite soundtracks. I just wish I didn't have to leave. There's so much South Dakota, so little time.